Hey everyone, it's Shama with Girls and Geese. We're back again for round two of our interview, uh, Next Generation series with Kamya Gaines. Uh, we apologize for the issues that we're having. Uh, hopefully we can get this going and get an awesome interview going. I apologize again. Um, so if you don't know who Kamya is, she is a orange belt out of Houston, Texas. Uh, Gracie, my sister. Uh, she's been competing. She's sponsored by a company called Sick Chick. Um, and, uh, all right, round two. <laughs> Sorry about that. We kept it... going in and out. <laughs> so, again, how did you get started in jiu-jitsu? Um, tell us sort of briefly about what led you to the, to taking, start taking up jiu-jitsu. Before that, I got extroverted Excellent. So was your relationship early on, what was your relationship like with jujitsu? Did you, you know, was it love at first sight? Did it take a little while to get used to it? What was, uh, how did that relationship develop? It was definitely like a hate to love relationship at first. I was just super like I nervous kid, and I didn't know what I was doing, but I found love in it later on. So what what was it? What is it that you love most about jujitsu? It allows me to meet like a bunch of new people, the same interests. It also allows me to like release stress. So do do you have a lot of friends that train jujitsu or are you, is it kind of are you is it kind of a uncommon thing that you are amongst only some of your friends that do it? Um it's kinda of like some of my friends do it, but the friends that I do like that do, do it, I'm more closer with them. So is it do you guys go to competitions together? Is do you do like what normal fifteen year old girls do, or is it just you just train all the time and you know what is it what does it look like when you're hanging out with your friends? Um, competitions together, training, try and make plans outside of it. Excellent. So, well, as far as your future goes, I know you're young, um, but what? What are some of your jujitsu goals moving forward? You know, where do you see yourself in the next like ten years when it comes to jujitsu? My goals is to be on top, be the best. I I choosing a career path that will allow that will allow me to train and compete still, but also be a backup plan. What is what is what are you looking to go to school for? What do you Looking to train for? Traveling nurse. Oh, that's a pretty awesome job. And you can go train everywhere else, all over the place. <laughs> yeah. So, are, in your school, are there a lot of, are you training predominantly with adults? Are you training with kids? I know you're, it's kind of that awkward age where you guys are big enough to train with the adults, but it's still fun to train people your age. What is who do you train with on a normal basis at your school? It's mainly like the adults and teenagers. Maybe that blend. Who's some of your favorite training partners? I would say Gianna Bailey. <laughs> and do you guys complement each other's game a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. Are you more of like a are you more of like a top player, a guard player? Are you ex guard player? What what's kind of some of your go tos? My go to was to pull guard and play guard, but I've joined wrestling ever since then. I kind of want to be on top more. So I'm trying to blend the two styles of sports. Have you been able to get any takedowns in the competition since you started wrestling? Excellent. <laughs> what's your favorite takedown? Uh, it's the double leg. Oh, yeah, that's mine, too. That's, like, my go-to as well. <laughs> so, 
Um, let me see. So when, as far as your jujitsu goes, you know, who, are there any like upper belts or any women out there or any guys or anybody out there that you really look up to? Like, this is somebody that, you know, I want to kind of model my career and my jujitsu journey along with, or maybe you play similar games as. I would definitely say Mona Bailey. The huge inspiration, the way she like just trains and put all her into everything, it really inspires me. The way she's also like she's a leader. Wow, absolutely, Mona. If you guys don't know who Mona is, Mona is also based out of Houston, Texas. She's a really incredible. Um, what's she now? Blue belt, purple belt, right? Purple belt, yes. Yeah, she just got her purple belt, um, and so I should definitely check her out. So. When you first started jujitsu, how old were you when you first started? I think I was a, around 11 or 12. 11 or 12. Were there a lot of little girls that when you were training, or was it mostly boys in the class, or was it kind of an even mix? I think it was mostly boys. Did that matter to you, at, like, in training? Like, did you feel more pressure going up against the boys, or... Do you now, or is it just doesn't matter? Gender just doesn't matter at all when it comes to training. I think at first it felt more pressure because I'm naturally a, more like skinnier, and it was like kind of like how to deal with that strength. But now I, it doesn't really matter to me. No. So how how do you feel like you have to modify your game when you're like competing or training for your partners or? Do you just kind of go into each round or each match, just kind of, this is what I'm going to work on, this is what my plan is? Or how do, you, how do you adjust and acclimate for each of your different partners that you go up against or opponents? I think I kind of modify it. Um, if I know some of their background or what they're best at, if we do the same thing, if, if I know they're going to pull guard and then I will go and talk, if I know they're top fit, I would I would like to play guard. Yeah, I think it's, every opponent's different, and I think my game's gonna be a little bit different than everyone. No, I think I agree with that. I think you kind of it changes up every time, for sure. Mm -hmm. So we kind of talked about it a little bit. You said that you got into jujitsu because you were being bullied. Um, you know, unfortunately, is it is a widespread issue that we see happening for, you know, youths as well as, like, adults, you know, doing it to each other. Um, so what are some advice that – what's some advice that you have for someone who's maybe getting bullied and, you know, it's kind of hitting that point where it's unmanageable and you're getting really depressed about it? What's some advice that you can lend to someone else who's, who's going through that? I think my advice for that is to tell, like, a trusted adult, find, like, outlets and coping mechanisms that can help you with that, and just, like, know that it's going to pass eventually. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, now you're, you're, what, are you a sophomore now, is that right? Yes, ma'am. You're a sophomore, so how is... How is high school wrestling these days? You know, we see so many young women coming up, like taking, you know, closing out divisions. You know, how how has rest? Is there a lot of young girls there? Or what is the scene like down in Houston? I think there's a lot more girls in other places. It's still kind of small. But it's like more competition. And it's definitely a tough sport, especially to more of like the lighter weights. It's definitely, it can be more packed divisions do you um do you find that like a lot of the you know has your jujitsu game changed at all since you started doing wrestling you know the objective in wrestling is you don't ever want to get on your back right and you're saying you're a guard player so how is do you ever like get kind of you know like you know, you started in jiu-jitsu and moved to wrestling. Has that been a hard transition to kind of get away from that comfort of being on your back? I think at first, we were really like, my first like wrestling match ever, I pulled guard on accident. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> 
But um, it was way more harder coming back from wrestling and going back into jiu-jitsu. I got more of a habit of turning to my stomach, and it got me really frustrated for a while. But I think it's easier to transition to jiu-jitsu wrestling. The other less, way around. Yeah. It's less positions, and it's less things you have to worry about. So what are some of the – what are some challenges that you've had to – overcome in your jujitsu journey what would you say is up there as far as some of the biggest challenges that you faced i think one of those my injuries i dislocated both my shoulders before that had me for a while i've also recently dislocated my knee Ugh. and it's giving me problems i just got cleared to train again so i work through that pain and get that flexibility back into it it's difficult lately you're so young, though. Trust me, it gets a lot harder when you get older. <laughs> you bounce back a lot easier than than we do. <laughs> the older you get, but um, so how what has kind of like helped you get through those? You know, jujitsu is not a it's not a straight line. You know, everybody's journey is different. Everybody has different obstacle and challenges to go through. You know, what are some things that kind of helped you? get through, you know, the, there's mountains and valleys, right? So what are some things that kind of helped you get through those valleys and, and move forward and, um, you know, kind of keep you going? What, what are some things that help keep you going in your jiu-jitsu journey? I think it's just support from my teammates, still talking to them, and just kind of when I drive to get back into it. I would still go support them at fights, still go hang out with them, and go them and that really made me just want to get through it and go back into it. It's also my parents helped me a lot through it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, having that support system is huge. I agree. I think that's something that we all, you know, need desperately when we're going through something rough. That's for sure. <laughs> so, if you were to if you were to sum up your jujitsu journey and just use one word, what would that one word be? Oof. <laughs> or we could say, if you could sum up your jujitsu game in one word, what would that one word be? Um, scramble. <laughs> so scramble. Why would you? Well, how would you? What makes it? Uh, what would? What depicts it as a scramble? I think I guess. For me, if sometimes it's good to be bad. <laughs> a lot of scrambling. <laughs> a lot of scrambling. <laughs> no, excellent. So if you had one piece of advice, so say there's a young girl or a young boy who's saying, you know, who's listening today and saying, yeah, I'm thinking about doing jujitsu. But, you know, I'm not really sure what is some what is some piece of advice that you would give them if they're brand new, just kind of thinking about it. Just go for it. Just but go for it. It's honestly one of the best things that ever happened to me. This, I would tell you, yeah, no, I agree. Well, awesome. Well, thank you so much. It was such a pleasure having you on today. I'm so happy that we had an opportunity to share a little bit of your journey, a little bit of your insight today. Again, apologize for the technical difficulties we're having today. Um, and uh, yeah, it was an honor to have you on today. Thank you so much. It's, it's really awesome to be able to feature young up and coming women like yourself. I think that the sky's the limit. I think that you're going places. So I look forward to seeing where your jujitsu journey goes and, uh, and the difference that your generation makes for the coming years. <laughs> thank you so much. No, thank you. And please tell your parents we said thank you as well. We appreciate them letting you be a part of this. And uh, thank you for everybody tuning in. We will see you next time. Take care. Bye. Bye.